<laughs> Why are you crying? Who keeps saying Rock is dead? Rock is not dead. And Rock and Pod is an annual reminder of that. Rock and Pod is a unique annual event bringing together rock fans, artists, podcasters, and vendors for events that celebrate the past, promote the present, and look to the future. Step into the future. Now. Now. Live. Live on location. At the aforementioned Rock and Pod. From downtown Nashville, Metal Mayhem ROC founder, John, John the Verno Matic Verno, and show producer and co-host, Southern Cal. This is Ryan Spencer Cook from the Ace Fraley Band. This is Jeremy Asbrock from the Ace Fraley Band and Rock City Machine Company, and you're listening to Metal Mayhem ROC with the Vernomatic in Southern Cal. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Vernomatic here, Southern Cal down at Rock and Pot 2023. We have an impromptu additional guest here, the new band Rock City Machine Company. I made Ryan come. That, that's all. That's awesome because last Monday night on the Metal Mayhem ROC Live Radio Show, yeah. we debuted the new single. Thank you for doing that. Thank you very much, Jeremy. What's that song called? Can't stop the train. We're gonna touch on their their other side gigs, but these guys finally they've known each other for years, and they put together a three piece. It's Jeremy, it's Brian, and it's uh, Phil from. Phil. Except, except and except he plays guitar, and this band he's playing bass. That's right. Yeah. Who's the drummer? Well, on the record, uh, the record was produced by Marty Fredrickson, and uh, the three of us, you know, we kind of consider ourselves the band, Philip, Jeremy, and myself. Uh, and Marty, we didn't have a drummer in mind yet, so Marty's son, Evan Fredrickson, played drums, who's a monster, and it was Marty's suggestion. Because we're like, who are we going to get? Who are we going to hire to be on this record with us? And he's like, my son's perfect, and he was. He's great. Well, th that's awesome, man. I like to see that. I've seen you guys in the Ace Freely band several times. You're in the Gene Simmons band, Caught the Turning Stone. That's right. Casino oh, game. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was when uh, they were doing the Soda Pop tour. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. There. Now, the Soda Pop tour. I know the Soda Pop guys. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I went to the Niagara Falls show. You sure did. With John and yeah. uh, the other cat. Yeah. So, you know, there's a big web. What else is going on? What's going on with the, the new one? Is it's Rock City Machine Company. Yeah, Mark's Rock City Machine Company. Uh, we were kicking around names for a long while, and Jeremy pulled that one out of the hat. And for whatever reason, at the beginning, it, it didn't stick, did it? Uh, no. So there was a building downtown Nashville before they were knocking them all down and building hotels. And that was like a water treatment supply company or something. And that name was at the top of their building. And I always thought, like, that'd be such a cool band name. And then they knocked that building down and built a hotel. And, you know, I, I think they're still a company. But, hey, man, as long as we don't start a, a water treatment supply business <laughs> and they don't try to do shows, I think it's all good. That's so funny you say that because I was doing, you know, searches for it. And that shit was coming up. Was I'm it like, really? I totally stole the name. <laughs> well, the good news is the band is in its infancy stages. It's brand new. So, you know, just like anything, it'll take people a little while to warm up to it and find out what it is and all that. But. We're doing our best just to keep spreading the word about it so far. The one thing that I noticed is that every band name is taken. All of them. They've all been used, man. It was so hard. It was hard coming up with a name. I mean, we've been the Talisman for a long time, but Jeff Scott Soto had a band called Talisman, so that that was out. We couldn't do it. So what's going on? Are you are you touring? Is uh, I know I know Ace is doing a string of shows. We go back out with Ace the end of next month. We just got back from a West Coast run. Uh, the way, we're, the way Ace works is we're booked into December of every year, right? Uh, usually about the middle of December, 14, 15 will be the last show of the year. And they're just, you know, every couple of weeks, our itinerary, we have its, its blank. It just keeps getting filled in. So, you know, we just got a new string of dates that are happening. So we'll be touring clear into December again. And, and summer is particularly busy. It, it's filled in pretty nice. Yeah. I see you have a Jamestown, New York show, I think, on the yeah. 29th. Oh, do we? Okay. Yeah. They're up there. And, you yeah, know, that's, I, a, that's on the next run, I think, in April, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. Yeah, April 29th. You know, I follow it. You guys are on my radar. Oh, good. You know, that's Ace, good. I've been seeing Ace for yeah. years. Uh, what, what else? When you play with Ace, you tour. Is this new outfit going to tour, or you like to? or? Like I said, we want to. That's the plan. Uh, you know, it's not. It's, it's no big secret that we're working with two, three different schedules, actually, because we're Jeremy and I have the Ace schedule. Philip has the Accept schedule. 
uh, Ace, you know, we got to keep up with Ace, but it's just going to be one of these things where it's just got to be, it's going to be a slow build. It's definitely a marathon. We can't sprint into it. And it's just going to depend on availability and how we can coordinate all of it together. But and uh, you know, we'll also want to do something like that after we actually have some product. And since vinyl printing companies are backed up six months, and it's going to be that long before we have an album anyway, yeah. that you know, it'll be something that happens eventually. Yeah. I'm going to ask you. Um, I got to see you guys two years in a row down in Melbourne, Florida, at the King yeah. Center, um, and then he, he like skipped. It was like, any plans to come back to Melbourne? Do oh, you know? absolutely. You know, what's funny is I can't give you specific dates, but earlier this year, but in a conversation with our agent, we had a, a, a date of Florida runs booked and then they had to be moved. And it was about four or five dates, wasn't yeah, it? it so we'll be back there this year. I just can't tell you when, but it'll I happen. I think you guys came to Orlando instead, but it was, oh, that King Center is five minutes from where I live. So oh, it's no a King. great local show. Ace Freely's my guy from way back in oh, the day. Oh, that's great. And I loved the, the band rocks. You Thank guys you. Thank you very jammed. much. Both times I got to see it. Thank it was you. awesome. I, I love Ace, too. And I've been seeing him since Creatures of the Night. Oh, wow. And I got to give a shout out to my buddy, Kale Jammer, that's listening to this. He's the one that we go to all these shows. All oh, right on. If you can say hello to Kale hey, Jammer. Hey, Kale. Hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> well, you know, we're at, at that Niagara Falls show. And, you know, both of you guys, not just stroking, you kick ass. It's Thanks. the band. Thanks. That fucking, you know, does Thank the heavy you. lifting. Thank you. But you both split it up. I think, did you sing Detroit? I did. And did you do Strutter? Uh, Strange Ways. Yeah. So, uh, see, when you saw us last time, Philip was with us still. Philip sang Strutter. I sang Detroit. Detroit. Jeremy sang Strange Ways that night. Yeah, I think that was Zach. Oh, at, was it? Uh, Niagara Falls. See, I can't keep. Oh, Niagara Falls. The bass player? Yeah. Was he a shorter guy? Yeah. Dark yeah. hair? Yeah. 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 That and was then Jeremy's doing actually two songs in the set now. Yeah, Jeremy's I'm doing singing Getaway now yeah. also. Oh, well, so he's going into the, uh, I we see he's adding some of the solo stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, insane. Yeah, so, you know, we've been doing the same set for about a year and a half, and I knew coming into this year, it, it we needed to shake it up a little bit because there were some of the venues we were going to go back for the third time, and it's like, man, we can't do the same set. And, man, Ace was very receptive to yeah, he was. everything. Yeah, yeah. How, how's Ace doing? Is he good? Still Ace? Yeah, he's still Ace. <laughs> uh, he's working on his new record, and you know, he's doing good. When will that new record be out? Do you know? Don't know. No idea. And are you guys playing on it? We're not. I'm not. No. I mean, he he records in Jersey, and you know, he's always got a home studio, and I don't know. He's in Jersey, and we're in Nashville, and and, and honestly, Ace plays a, most of the stuff himself, other than the drums. Do you ever do anything with Gene anymore? And are either of you guys involved with that Gene Simmons dinner next month? We are not. Uh, that's going to be uh, Brent Fitz, Todd Kearns, and Brent Woods. Uh, we did get a message from Gene about it because he's very, very, very cool like that. Uh, isn't it God damn it, Todd Kearns? Isn't that his <laughs> I nickname? It's damn it, I, I don't know if it's God damn it, but it is Todd damn it Kearns. Yeah, yeah, sure that's is, what yeah. it is. We had him on about a month ago, the Heroes and Monsters. Oh, great. Great, great guy. I Incredibly. Mean, almost the post interview was longer than was it really? the interview. Yeah. Like, you know, they're, they're all Vegas based and it's a Vegas thing. And Gene was just like, look, man, I'm just going to use these guys because. He sent us about 30 minutes. It'd be weird to fly you guys out just to play for 30 minutes. and Yeah. In that whole scenario where I guess the press said Ace hired, stole Gene's band. No, you know what? Gene is solely responsible for us being Ace's band. Because when we were in Australia, the uh, we had a, uh, four cities. And the promoter asked if Ace could open the show. And, uh, you know, Ace asked Gene if he could use us. And Gene gave his blessing. And he goes, but it's, you got to ask them. If they'll do it. So we did. And then at the end of the run. Yeah, he was uh, just like, Ace, you need to hire my band. Because he, he knew he was going back to Kiss for a couple of years, you know, for the end of the road tour. And he hasn't done any Gene solo shows since. Yeah, he and he was real cool, like Jeremy said. He sent us an email, the three of us, Phil and Jerry and myself, and just said, hey, man, I'm going to do this Vegas thing, this one off. Uh, but. I'll see you next year. We'll do it. We'll get back together. Let me ask you something, and you don't have to take a deep dive into it. How much of what is said about the relationship between Gene, Ace, and Paul is bullshit, and it's really just whatever? I, They're cool. I mean. I can tell you Gene and Ace have always been very cool around us. I've never been any part of the the, the Paul-Ace uh, relationship at all, except for what we see in the press that you guys know. But uh, Jeremy and I can, and he'll tell you too, they were very cool to each other. 
around us. I got to say, some of my coolest experiences with the two of them is just hanging out in airports in Australia and just fly on the wall watching them talk and, and talk about old times and interact and stuff. I mean, that that was a KISS fan's dream. Uh, were they Did they get recognized while just sitting there casually oh, yeah. talking? Well, most of the time we got to sit in a, a private area because, you know, the two of them together have enough weight to where we, we just couldn't hang out in general population. And since we're the band, we got to we got to be with them. Jeremy, let me ask you about your involvement with uh, John Karabi yeah. and that live album. What, I, I did the research. What was that all about? Well, so it was the anniversary of Motley 94. Uh, his manager at the time suggested he go out and do something doing the 20th anniversary of it. That didn't wind up happening until the next year. But, you know, I, I was already playing guitar with him, and, you know, we just kind of worked it out. He was on tour doing his acoustic thing. Uh I, and the rest of the band and myself back here just carved out all the parts and went out and did it. And, you know, we kind of thought a live album would be the best way to document that and keep it alive. Great album. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, Jeremy's still waiting on his vinyl copy of that record. Yeah. <laughs> he may be waiting. Uh, Cal, anything else you want to shoot by these guys before we let them go? I was just wondering, when you were in Australia, did you play the, the big four cities? The only one we did not do was, uh, we didn't do Perth. Because it's clear on the other side. Yeah, we, we yeah. started in Adelaide and then went to Brisbane. Melbourne and then Sydney and we closed out in Brisbane. Yeah, and then we went straight from Australia to Japan uh, without Gene, because Gene had to go back and we did uh, eight more shows in Japan with Ace. But uh, one thing I recommend to your listeners, if you look on YouTube, the sound check from Brisbane, Ace and Gene came to that sound check the only time, and we jam Kiss songs, we jam cover songs, and and yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun, and I, I recommend that to Kiss fans. That was because we would do like just a verse or just a chorus of like deep Kiss stuff or like old songs that they love it's yeah, pretty cool that's cool that fly in the wall well you know what you guys are fans just like you know absolutely else, fans we all grew up on it so jeremy ashbrock and ryan spencer cook the new one the new band rock city machine company the new single it's tied into nascar nascar give us yeah. a quick yeah real quick uh they reached out to us jeremy and i met with uh, one of the music supervisors when we were performing near bristol uh about a month ago uh, we're talking about it, and it's such high energy. That song, Can't Stop the Train, makes you want to drive fast. And that's how we told her about it. Her name's Karen. And uh, she talked to the music supervisor, and they're like, we'd like to use this to promote our upcoming race in Bristol. So there's TV spots, there's radio spots. And to tell you the truth, it kind of forced our hand as to what song we were going to release first. It made it real easy for us because our producer was like, look, if that song's out there, people are going to try to hear it and go find it. We need to have that song out. So we're like, well, it's the first song on yeah, the I record. That's the first single. Then. Be that's the first single. And that's how it happened. Can't stop the train. I'm wondering if uh, Mitch Perry has heard that because uh, Mitch Perry, we talked to him earlier. He's a race car driver and has the oh, school really? and all that. Yeah. And uh, That's awesome. We'll have to have him hear it. Well, congratulations on the Eddie Trunk appearance last oh, week. Oh, thanks. I the video. That was fun. Yeah. You're on your media. You're on the back. <laughs> you know, then you start talking, then you go back. It's good stuff. So, it was fun. Guys, thanks for stopping. Thanks Thank for you for letting me bust in on this. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. Th thanks, guys.